Well, I, I was here on Halloween Eve alone. Me and the pets. We, we had a big bowl of full-size candy for all the kids. Oh, full-size. And nobody came. Really? I felt bad because we actually got kids this year. Last year, I bought a shit ton of candy. We got no kids. This year, we decided to go out and we started getting kids and we had candy because I figured better to have candy and not need it. So we ended up like we left a bowl out and we put a sign up on the door like, we are not home. Please take some candy. And we live in fucking Stepford. So no, we, we had we had no kids. That's no. so sad. So people of america i have i must implore you i have a request um have more kids no yes no yes and it's it's not for anything like social security it's so that i am not left alone with a giant bowl of candy you monsters the earth's already overpopulated man well someone's got to eat this candy and it can't be me because i'm giant can't Sarah bring it to work? Tara, if my ass gets any more fat, I'm going to get stuck in the door. Like last year, I had a ludicrous amount left over, so I brought it to the cat shelter. Like, I'm, I, I, I am, I am already like, I, ba I back up and my ass starts beeping. <clears throat> this can't continue. Don't leave me with the candy, you bastards. What's wrong with you? Don't do that to me. I mean, I'd say, can't you bring it to work, but you work from home. Yes. And I can't give it to the dog because he died. Yeah. You do not want to give, I don't know what kind of candy you got, but if it's chocolate, definitely not. Oh, yeah. We got the Reese's Pieces. We, well, we got the, not the Reese's Pieces. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. And M&M's, full-size bags, M&M's. We got Costco just sells ginormous bags, but it's brand name candy. They just, I don't know how they get the licensing, but it's their brand bag, but it's all actual brand name candy. Yeah. So we just got a giant bag of that. And like last year I was handing out, like kids would reach for one piece and I'm like, oh no, allow me. Cause you're the second kid here tonight and it's 9 PM. Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So maybe that's why we got more kids this year. Maybe they were like, that lady will give you all the candy. But I felt bad. I we would give out. them all the candy. If only one kid showed up, I would have dumped the whole bowl in his bag. The three kids that showed up at my door last year made out like fucking bandits. And then we, we were like, well, we don't get kids, so we'll go out. And then we got kids, and I felt really bad. All right, let's get started here. And, like, the cats were all excited. Peggy and Simba were like, oh, little tiny humans at the door. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out the worldwide interweb, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And you know what? Just briefly to touch on this, speaking... Okay, fuck the what is wrong with you? What, fuck, fuck the walk. Fuck the walk is we wrong changing the name. Fuck the walk, yeah, because I can't talk. Um... <laughs> Speaking of giving stuff treats out to uh to to kids at Halloween, just want to touch on this one briefly. Um Mark Sanford, remember him? Unfortunately, yeah. He uh used to be the governor of South Carolina until he went hiking the Appalachian Trail. And then somehow now he's my uh representative in Congress after that. That's what we call failing up. Well, uh, he failed again. Um, th this this showed up. Uh, no. He posted this on Halloween. There better have been a fun side Snickers with that motherfucker. Happy Halloween. Accordingly, pocket constitutions are ready for today's trick or treaters. Uh <laughs> It's almost like he wanted to redecorate his house in toilet paper and rotten eggs, but just didn't yeah. want to do the work himself. Yeah. And that's why we left out the bowl of candy with the note, because I was like, I don't want to get egged. Like, I don't want to be assholes. We decorated the house, and generally that's the sign that you're a Halloween-friendly house. So, like, I was like, I don't care if one kid comes along and takes all the candy. At least they know we intended to give out candy. It it didn't go over well. He got ratioed. 
he got so ratioed, but I mean, yeah, that's bullshit. The only paper it's acceptable to give out on Halloween is the little McDonald's coupon books you can buy. Yes, those are. And acceptable. I thought about doing those instead of candy, knowing we wouldn't be home. But then I figured someone's more likely to steal a bunch of coupons than a bunch of candy. It's like, what did you get? I got some goobers. What did you get? I got licorice. What did you get? I got a constitution. Yeah. And while I believe that every kid should have a copy of the Constitution available to read, and that would be a great idea if you gave that out with a piece of candy. You cock. If but... you did that and a piece of candy, great. You're in the spirit of the holiday. You're being educational. I feel like he didn't do candy, too. But we, we are easing into the Halloween aftermath, such as it is. Oh, boy. This came out of Middleton, Ohio. I'm sure many people have seen this because every time after Halloween. Last week, we had one just before Halloween. Every time after Halloween, some adult has to do something with their costume. Yeah. That's not a good idea in any circumstance. And then get all surprised when people are not happy Don't about like it. Fort. Teen Idaho educator suspended for offensive border wall Mexican costumes. And you're These like fucking people. You're like, Nash, how bad could this be? It's how how bad? bad. Here we go. Um, let's have a look here at the pictures. Um, this these are school workers who their costume is a wall on the border with the words make America great again. And also, they dressed up as Mexican stereotypes. What I don't get is, like, these are educators. Yeah, these are teachers. Everybody I knew in college that was studying, like, early education were, like, the fuzziest, softest-hearted people you could ever hope to meet. Because who else wants to be around kids all the time that you didn't make? Who else wants to be around 20 of somebody else's stupid kids all the time? But the nicest people in the world. So I can't, like, I have some cognitive dissonance on this because I can't make that work with such a fucking callous, completely devoid of empathy bullshit thing to do. Yeah, I mean, if if it was just the if it was just the Mer the Mexican stereotypes, I might I might might have gone, okay, you guys don't get it. I think one of the teachers is in the sexy pinata costume we made fun of. She is. Oh, my God, she is. She better have candy up her vagina. If it had just been the costumes, but it's the wall. It's the border like, wall. The, the Mexican, the sombreros and shit would be pretty bad still. Uh-huh. But you had to just go over the top, no pun intended, and add the wall. And then you had to put fucking MAGA on that wall. I, it's. It, <sighs> and you know, like, probability just would, would seem to demand that it, there's at least one Latino kid in one of their classes. Who just has to sit there and. It's fucking America in 2018. There's at least one. Latino kid in one of these teachers' classes that had to go to school and see their teacher do that to them. Yep. I flipped a bitch on my high school gym teacher because he wore an orange sweatshirt on St. Patrick's Day. He was Jewish. He didn't know. He was like, what? It's in the flag. And I'm like, oh my God, no. Like, he didn't even mean it. And no. I flipped a bitch on him. And I'm a white kid. This was on purpose. 14, of, and that's what blows my mind. This isn't just one of them. This was 14 of them got together and go, hey, you know what would be great? This would be a great idea. No one could possibly have a problem with this. We should just bully the children. They're saying that Mike says this school is 13% Latino. Sorry, guys, my nose is itchy. 13 for 13? Jesus Christ. So guaranteed, there were kids that had to sit through their fucking day. I don't know how you think that's okay. To do to small children. And also the pinata costume, so that you're 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 a double idiot. Yeah. 
Once, twice, three times a moron. Uh, well, let's get into other strange stupidity that came, comes from the aftermath of Halloween. I gotta say, I did not expect this. This, this one, wow. You know how we often talk about regulation, and it's like, you have to put, like, labels on everything, and the reason is because somebody did it. Because people are fucking stupid. Like, you have to, you have to put, don't drink the copy toner on the copy toner, because someone drank the cup. Do not iron clothes on body. Yes. Why is it okay to be stereotypical Mexican, but okay to be drunk Irish stereotype? It's not okay to be drunk st Irish stereotype, and I will punch you in the face. That's why. This... I, I don't... What the fuck? CDC urging people to stop using <gasps> dead bats as Halloween decorations. Like real ones? Centers for D Disease Control is sending a bizarre new warning urging people to stop using dead bats as Halloween decorations. The National Fish and Wildlife Service says they're seizing illegal dead bats shipped to the U.S., most of the time, these spooky specimens are fully taxidermied. People use them as wall hangings or outdoor decor. The biggest problem, dead bats carry disease. So people are shipping dead bats into the country? As decorations! Uh, what? Well, okay. You know they make them out of plastic, right? I married a dude who's gothy as fuck. He loves Halloween. And I don't think he'd ever import dead bats. What do you, what do you, what, how does that work on Halloween? The kids come up, oh yes, please enjoy my fine imported dead bat decorations. I spared no expense. I mean, there's parts of this country where taxidermy is like a thing. Yeah. I don't get it. No. Taxidermy used to be like a thing in Ireland when I went when I was 13. Everywhere you went was just covered in dead animals. Not, but not so much the last couple times, but this, like. This isn't even dead animals they got themselves. They imported them. <laughs> That's cheating. Who are you showing off for? Yeah, it's what... The bats are like nice. Yes, well, the Johnsons down the street, they have plastic bat decorations. We, <laughs> we, we went all out this year. We have the nice imported dead carcasses. <laughs> we have genuine bubonic plague. What the fuck is just, I have never seen this before. If the CDC has to send out, a, guys. Then that means it's a thing. Could you stop importing dead bats? Please. This is how 28 Days Later starts. Seriously. Just... This is how I know I live in Stepford. This town has a memorial park for everything. They have, we have a memorial park for military service dogs. Okay, it's, oh. it's nice, but it's a little niche. Yeah, we have a memorial park for every, we have a 9-11 memorial park. Mm-hmm. Nothing happened in this town on 9-11. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure somebody knew somebody, because we're not far from New York, but nothing happened here. But we have memorial. We just like memorial parks around here. So at the end of my block is the Fireman's Memorial Park. It's a little mini okay. at the corner for, like, dead firemen. And there's a lovely fountain. <laughs> and on Halloween, we drove by and somebody had put soap in it. And I was like, that's adorable. <laughs> It's nice to see the old pranks come back. Just foam pouring out of the fountain. Hey, kids, here's here's a recommendation. Even better than soap, photo developer. That shit foams like crazy. You can't stop my, it. My sister's friends for their senior prank, they put up a new shopping center in our town the year my sister was a senior, and they filled that fountain with Jello mix. <laughs> it was a cold water fountain. <laughs> So that fountain got shut down for a few months while they did re extensive repairs. Soap is back. We may or yeah, I was like, that's so cute. They put soap in the fountain. We may or may not have.
put photo developer in the fountain in the park in Savannah, the main park. We may or may not have done that at some point. You Hypothetically. I neither right. confirm nor deny. Oh, let's get back to some to, to more normal stuff for us. Sadly. And I want to point out there's no there's no explanation for anything in this story. This is just what happened. Photo developer is toxic, so is soap. Half naked woman arrested after falling twice <laughs> through a restaurant ceiling. Twice now. Kingsport, Tennessee. Uh, police in Tennessee arrested a 26-year-old woman after she fell through a ceiling tile at a restaurant in Kingsport while she was nude from the waist down. Authorities arrested Haley Morton, 26, on charge of criminal trespassing, vandalism, and disorderly conduct. According to the news station, Morton caused an estimated $500 worth of damage late Tuesday night after she gained access to the ceiling of Cookout, a restaurant on East Stone Drive. An employee called police around 10 p.m. to report that a woman identified in Morton as Morton had partially fallen through a ceiling tile in the restaurant kitchen before pulling herself back up and running around in the ceiling. An officer responding to the call found broken support rails on the floor, but did not immediately see Morton. She was discovered after she fell through a second ceiling tile in the kitchen and attempted to enter the dining area. Authorities believe Morton was able to get into the roof of the cookout by entering an unauthorized area with stairs that led to the roof and then pried open a screen to the air conditioning vent. The last line of the story, it was not immediately clear why Morton went into the ceiling. What? What happened? Yeah. Lots of questions. If you climb into the ceiling of the restaurant, you take off your pants. Where are your pants? Like, what happened there? Your no pants. And then you're ro now, running. Like, there's insulation and stuff up there that you do not want in a vagina. <laughs> I so I would not recommend going pantsless in the ceiling. So why? 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 What happened here? Like, was she hoping to sneak into the kitchen and steal some food and nobody would notice? Well, that was what the pants taking the pants off made her extra stealthy. It's it's like it, I I don't know. I don't I don't I don't know. Is she, is she like a wear rat and she didn't realize she shifted back? <laughs> well, that 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 would people are gonna have to look that shit up. Because everybody knows that animals only have to wear shirts, not pants. It's cartoon rule. Oh. So maybe she shapeshifted into a rat, fell asleep, and then like didn't realize that she had shifted back. I, I just this is just one of those. You're you're at work. You're in fast food, which is already not easy. Which work. already blows. And then this happened. And then some chick without pants falls through the ceiling and you're just like, I quit. And, and you're going to, you're going to have to clean that shit up too. Yeah. Here's another one that I don't, maybe this seemed like a good idea at the time. Maybe it didn't work out that way, but maybe it seemed like one. Man was drunk when he jumped on horse, rode it to track at Churchill Downs. Okay. According to an arrest report, 24-year-old Michael Wells Rohde mounted a horse and rode it out of the tunnel and onto the track entrance during the Breeders' Cup Saturday evening. According to the arrest report, he sneaked into a restricted area of the track, mounted a horse, and rode it out of the tunnel area and into the track entrance. When he was asked to leave, police say he became loud and disorderly. They don't really take last minute entries. <laughs> no, they don't. Like, you can't just roll up to the Churchill Downs and be like, oh, I got this. It's like, I can do that shit. I can do that. I can ride a horse. I, I got it. I can do that. No problem. Easy. 
As the horse? Horse. I got that shit. No problem. What do you mean I can't? You're not my dad. Who are you? Do you know who I am? No, really. Do you know who I am? Because I forgot. You're it's not... not like the movies. You can't just show up and like compete in no, a static gesture. That's not how the world works. That's not. It's really not. This is not some cool running shit, okay? You can't pull that one off. I just I, I just love it that he got drunk enough to think, you know what? If you're riding a horse, that's all that matters, right? Yeah. That's 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 the only prerogative. That's the only yeah. uh, prerequisite here. In a circle. I could do that. Come I, on. Ride the horse at the circle. The horse does all the work. Come on. Right. All you have to do is sit there. <laughs> that fucking bucking bronco at the bar. I can stay on that shit for a minute and a half. <laughs> no. I've never. I mean, the, I can kind of see where it clicked together in his mind. There's, there's a reason they call it. Uh, they, they call alcohol liquid courage. After all, it's like I could do that. I could fucking do that. I'm going to do that. You remember Nancy Reagan and Just Say No? Yeah. That makes this even better. Those of you kids, you, you youngins who did not exist in the 80s, the first lady of the United States of America, Nancy Reagan, set up a drug initiative that was Just Say No. Just Say No to Drugs. If you hear that and these that, days. Like the thing, like yeah. you could not escape that in the 80s. Yep. If you, if, if you heard about uh, just say no that was nancy reagan that's what makes this even better prosecutors say sailors ran an lsd ring off the ronald reagan that's what you call ironic two sailors and i this is where it gets what the hell two sailors from the nuclear section of the aircraft carrier ronald reagan are facing court martial for allegedly using and distributing LSD. In addition to the two petty officers already heading to court martial, the Navy is pressing charges against three other Reagan sailors for allegedly using and possessing illegal drugs. Machinist yeah, this would probably make Dan pretty mad. Machinist mate nuclear second class Andrew W. Miller faces charges for using, possessing, and distributing hallucinogenic drugs. From January to February of this year, electrician's mate, nuclear second class Sean M. Uh, Guevara, was also charged. Military attorneys for the accused sailors did not return telephone calls seeking comment. Okay. If there's anybody on a fucking boat that you don't want fucking hallucinating, it's the fucking guys who work with the fucking nukes. It's it's not just the new. This is the, like I don't know. Is it the is it the reactor or is this the armament? It doesn't say. Like for for the re the reason he checked in in case anybody doesn't know. Yeah. Dan was in the army, and he was a nuclear biochemical specialist. So he's really fun to watch movies like The Rock with because you're like, so VX gas. It's really not that bad, right? And he's like, oh, it's so much worse. Cool. There, there are things he knows that I just try not to ask about because I like sleeping at night. So, yeah, that's the reactor section. It's there's not any like missile, nuclear missiles on, on a carrier. It's a reactor. Still, that's worse. Yeah, like you don't want to be hallucinating around nuclear anything. Hey, you don't want a bad trip. Oh, that's when you think that the fucking of it, you think the, the, the release valve for the fucking reactor is, is a subway sub oven. Right. You want it toasted, right? Yeah. No. You want the planet toasted? Okay. That's, that's where you, why would you bring, what kind of Homer Simpson bullshit is this? And I'm sure somebody's going to be like, well, they're probably doing it off duty. No. Here's the thing. You know the term flashbacks? That's a thing. Like, you do enough LSD, you get fucking hallucinations when you're not doing LSD. That's a thing that can happen to you. I want to point out that half, approximately half of the low-budget horror movies of the 80s 
had premises more or less just like this. Yeah. Return of the Living Dead. And just uh, had me watch that, and I was going to say, same thing. Same fucking thing. This is, this, this, what are you doing? Don't do that. Don't do drugs around the nuclear reactor. Don't sell drugs around the nuclear reactor. The only thing you should be doing around the nuclear reactor is making sure the nuclear reactor doesn't do anything. Yes. That's your one job. On the Ronald Reagan. On the Ronald Reagan. <laughs> I really need that Just Say No video where him and Nancy are sitting on the couch. Oh, that defined a generation. But not well enough. Apparently not. She was so tiny, Nancy Reagan. That's the, that's the thing I always remember about her. She was really, really, really petite. Like, that's not relevant to anything. <laughs> she was very tiny. Don't sell hallucinogens on the fuck out, damn it. Please, no. No. Finally tonight, this oh, is... Oh, hi, Simba. Leave Peggy alone. She didn't hiss at you. Yep, there... Hey, don't smack her. Sorry, I have to mother. Finally tonight, um, I, the, first, the only thing I can say to this one is there got to be easier ways to get frequent flyer miles. Um... Drunk baggage handler, fell asleep, woke up in Chicago. Oh. Uh, Chicago police say a baggage handler told them he was drunk when he fell asleep in a cargo hold and flew from Kansas City to Chicago. Well, now we know why your luggage gets lost. American Airlines says the Piedmont Airlines employee was working American Flight uh, 363 on Saturday when the Boeing 737 left Kansas City International Airport with the handler in a heated and pressurized cargo hold. Chicago Police Spokesman Anthony uh, Guglielmi. Did I say that right? Guglielmi. Guglielmi. No. Guglielmi. Guglielmi. Was silent when it's in the middle of the word. With Anthony, the Anthony Guglielmi says he found when the flight landed about an hour later uh, at Chicago's O'Hare Airport. The uh, spokesman says the handler told police he was intoxicated and fallen asleep. How? Now you know why your luggage gets lost. How the fuck? You're tanked. How the fuck? How? How the fuck? Come on, man. <laughs> Did nobody sit there and go, where's Bob? Has anybody seen Bob? Where's Tony? Nobody. How did this happen? I mean... Who's responsible this? You should try harder to make friends at work. Yeah, because so they miss you if you wind up disappearing. Yeah, this is pretty much the epitome of nobody gave a shit that he wasn't yeah. there. Nobody gave anything resembling a shit that he wasn't there. You should try to socialize at work a little more. A little bit more, yeah. Just no one checks the hold. No one does anything. They just you know throw the bags in. Well, that You're might done. have been his job. Point. Good point. So, yeah. <laughs> Honey, do you I remember like the packing? Idea that the baggage handlers are drunk. What? What? I don't like the idea that the baggage handlers are drunk. I have to check all my makeup when I travel. <laughs> and I usually travel with easily three, four hundred dollars worth of makeup. Oh, oh, Tara. You, you 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 don't want to know what goes on in baggage handling. Is that Loki? That's Loki, yes. <laughs> For a second I thought you were really hungry. No. No. That's that is Loki. Loki. 
I did they I wonder what did they find him when they were just sort of dumping bags? He's just he going around the carousel, just curled <laughs> up, snoring. <laughs> Who's claiming this to, one? I think they have to throw the bags onto the carousel, so I'd like to think somebody noticed. You'd like to. One. You'd like to. Yeah, unless they were drunk too. How did you, just you know what? I will have a nap. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to rest my eyes for a minute. He just woke the fuck up in Chicago. How's he getting home? I mean, he works for the airline. I don't think so. Not anymore. Yeah, true. He, he got one free flight. That's got to happen, though. Like, <laughs> I feel like that's more common than we hear about. What drunk baggage handlers getting accidentally? Not necessarily shipped. drunk, but like they work ridiculous hours. Like I, I forget who it was did a huge expose on like how I'm like how every pilot you've ever met is totally sleep deprived, which was really comforting. But like they work crazy hours and long shifts and stuff like that. So I gotta think in the plane you don't take a nap in the plane. Not in the plane. I mean, you and I wouldn't. <laughs> but the world is full of stupid people. Yeah. Yes, it is. Like, Post Malone is legitimately famous. The world is full of stupid people. I guess the, the first thing we learned this week is, um... Maybe, maybe not... Don't, don't, don't drink in baggage. Yeah. <laughs> Don't drink in anything involving planes, please. Yeah. Um, I don't want to plummet out of the sky. We've learned just say no goes double for nuclear reactors. Yes. You know, LSD, however you may feel about it, it has its place. And that's not next to a nuclear reactor. Nope. That doesn't go there. We've learned just because you have a horse doesn't mean you're in the race. <laughs> that could be that could be a little metaphor. Like <laughs> that should be a bumper sticker, actually. Just because uh, oh, we could sell it. Just because you have a yeah. horse doesn't mean you're in the race. Okay, I, I I said something in all of the many hours of doing this ridiculous shit. I just finally said something marketable. <laughs> I feel like no one wants to see your dick is marketable. <laughs> We've learned but probably to only 40% of your audience. We've learned that in most circumstances, you should stay out of a ceiling. Multiply that if you don't have any pants. Always wear pants when ceiling in. What drives me nuts about that story is there is no explanation for this shit. This no. Was just random crazy. Just fucking and that's what always That's what always gets me about these is how did you come to be at this place where you were naked and in the ceiling? This is not my beautiful house. This is not my it beautiful be life. It's job to interview these people and yeah. find out. We've learned taxidermy. Um, I should do a podcast of that. <laughs> interviewing all the, the subject we find. Just finding out. Like all the naked people and be like, so how did you become? I, I can call it. How did you come to be naked? You could get it. You could probably get a deal with with Ira Glass. <laughs> So what happened here? This naked life? This naked life, yeah. Um, we've learned that taxidermy, uh, not exactly a good party decoration. Yeah. Don't... There's like creepy and creepy. Yeah. Just get the plastic bats, for fuck's sake. Um, we've learned if your Halloween co if you're a grown up and your Halloween costume is making the children uncomfortable, you're kind of a dick. Yeah. Halloween is not for you. I mean, I think Halloween is for everyone. Yeah, but they take precedence. They they get first crack yes, at it. The children get first crack. Although and, it didn't really used to be about children. It used to legitimately about be, be about deterring the dead, but but now it's about kids. It's, it's so candy, cool. damn it. And even if it wasn't a holiday about kids, even if it was like Arbor Day. You know what day is a good excuse not to be a dick to children? Every day. 
and especially if you're their teacher. And finally, we've learned that that uh, it, if you really want to get the the trick end of trick or treat, just hand out a pocket concept. Fucking Mark Sanford. I mean, I guess he wasn't giving out Bibles. Oh, oh, oh! Bird, someone call the bird ward. Somebody call the bird. Oh no! Maybe that's next year. Oh no!